Welcome to Rule of Thirds, an offshoot of our Screen Refresh podcast. Our goal every episode is to take a little break from watching and analyzing movies to dive headfirst into some nostalgia or just get a little creative. So every month, we select a different topic and create a top three list that may or may not be dear and dear to each of our hearts. Shoot us a message on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email to ScreenRefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three would be or to suggest future Rule of Thirds topics. Today, me, Dean Fisher, I am hosting, and I'm joined by my hosts of equal stature, Tim and Nick. Hello there. Welcome back, Dean. And today's topic is covering our top three characters who should not have perished in their respective media. I think this might be spoilers. Spoilers! I say respective media because I chose um, a CD-ROM game from 1996. A commercial. <laughs> 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 Old man Wilkins, he drinks milk. Oh yeah, hey, it's me, I'm back, by the way. About damn time. I was gone a long time. You are, yeah. Tim and Nick were just upset at the kind of brash comments I would make on the show, and they wanted to try other people out, and I, I think we're we're putting a poll out to see if you liked David better, or my wife, Laura, better, or me, and <laughs> they'll become, whoever wins will be the new host, or maybe I'll stay, maybe I'll leave. Whoever we'll wins, we lose. <laughs> <laughs> Was but, that the uh, Freddy versus Jason uh, tagline? Ellie no, versus, no, versus Predator. Oh, that's yeah. the one. Whenever they make a movie, we lose. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, I've seen the movie. We lo- we lost, but it never made sense because like whoever wins, America we lost. lose. So it's n- no matter who wins, we still lose at the end. Or is it whoever wins, we lose the if other I, one? Like, up, oh, we lost them. If I had a choice though between losing to a xenomorph or a predator, I feel predators at least kill you almost quick and painless. Whereas, Whatever option you know, is not acid or impregnation, I'm fine with. Yeah, well, I mean, that's... I, Plas- I, be plasma told. cast me. <laughs> Please. Do it, I'm right here. Do it, come on. Yeah, that's like right to the heart, you know, you're, you're done. Just just get come it over on, with. Do it. I have to, yeah, do it, do it now, kill me. <laughs> my luck, I'd be the, find the one predator who decides, like, I'm going to do this with my bare hands and a rock. <laughs> you have all your tools please use them starts breaking each bone in your body <laughs> you went to like the one serial killer predator from their planet that they're like yeah we exile him he just samples arnold one-liners <laughs> <laughs> remember when i said i'd kill you last 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 <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh i'm sick i'm getting over a sickness so if i sound a tad bit nasally I literally, sorry, okay, so I was sick, like, almost two weeks ago, like, just, it wasn't COVID, it's just a cold, and it's just lingering, it's, like, killing me. New England is being blasted with pollen right now, so everyone's been coughing and stuff at work, it's not sickness, it's just, you go outside, like, it was snowing today, with how that one tree is, like, the fluffy little cotton kind of puffs. There's one tree nearby, several trees nearby, that when the wind really picks up, it looks like it's snowing. And then when the wind like brings it over to like certain corners, it looks like snow drifts. That's how much of those like white puff things are there. That's why I say we need to get rid of all the trees. <laughs> you saw the happening. If only we could have a big business come in and buy up all the forest <laughs> land and get rid of it. You sound like a villain in one of these 90s uh, kids movies. (laughs) Characters that should have died. Wait, no. Characters that should have lived. You could definitely have an episode on characters who should have died. but uh, There's always, I mean, characters that should have died is always the one guy in a zombie movie who gets bit. And they're like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, there's always the one. Those are the COVID people that go to movie theaters when they're still hacking and coughing. (laughs) Yeah, that they're like, man, but I just got to see the Super Mario Brothers film. And I was like, yes, that's what's worth this. Yeah, I did go to a movie yesterday, but I'm not contagious. I'm just, I just have a cough. 
Dean would hide if he got bit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know when that turns everybody, okay? Were you bit, Dean? No, I got... I, this is... I scratched it. Yes. Yeah, when do zombie... Why do zombie scratches do anything, right? I mean, what's in their fingernails? I mean, I assume there's got to be some sort of... I'm sure when they cough, they cover their mouth with their hand, <laughs> yeah. and then they don't That's wash their is. hands after, so they're scratching you. That's, I see. That makes a lot of sense. It's just their oily secretions. Maybe they're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> this does not follow what I learned in science class about zombies. So yeah, so there's always going to be those characters that I feel like every time I watch a movie, I really wish that they just survived even if it breaks or ruins the rest of the film, there's just some that you want to live. That's why I wanted this. You wanted this. I kind of struggled um, only because it was a little last minute decision. I'd been busy and I didn't want to lose out on the opportunity to actually record tonight. But um, I struggled a little bit because I know after we record this, I'm going to come up with at least five, six more different choices. Like, oh, I should have said this one. Oh, I should have said that one. So, like, my first choice is um, no fanfare needed, just Brian Cranston in Godzilla. Now, say my name. You're goddamn right. It is such a waste of talent because he stole the movie for the first 20 minutes, and then when he dies, yeah. the whole rest of it is completely forgettable. I forget who I was, what YouTuber, what reviewer thing was talking about. You can mark a movie on how good it is and especially how good the characters are based on if you can remember any of their names. After watching Godzilla, you can only remember Brian Cranston's name. What was his Everybody name? else's. I, I don't. It's been like several years <laughs> since I saw it. I don't want to. Wait, 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 wait. I remember, like, uh, he was everyone in the trailer. Can, that was like a surprise yeah. death, right? Or, like, we kind of were like, whoa, mm -hmm. he, di he dies already? They pulled a psycho yep. on us? Yeah, you have no idea that he's going to die. And then when he does, the whole rest of the cast that carries the movie, you don't care. You're just waiting for Godzilla to show up on screen every single time. I mean, at the time, was Brian Cranston more expensive than Elizabeth Olsen and Aaron Taylor Johnson or whatever? Yeah, because this I was before know. they had their Breaking. big strides in... um. I think they only just did Age, Age of Ultron, Ultron, if anything. Yeah, which yeah. is weird because they're brother and sister in that, and here they're husband and wife. I mean, what if it was just they were counting how much money they were using up on Brian Cranston? It was like when you're watching the meter at a gas pump, and they're just like, <laughs> okay, and he needs to go. He needs to go. Kill him. What scene are we at? Okay, let's. how do we write his death in this? Okay. Uh, suddenly and weirdly. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and he had the most character driven story out of everybody because he was driven to in not insanity but he knew what he saw but people expelled him out to be like some crazy guy cuz he thought he saw certain things and he was trying to develop or like develop a theory out of a conspiracy that's been going on with the plant and why that uh, whole thing was growing up and you actually were pretty invested on what's going on with him and then why finally when he ends up dying it's like what the fuck so he's kind of like the Godzilla equivalent of Randy Quaid's character in Independence Day. No, because Randy... He knows Andy, what's going his, on, but nobody believes him. Yeah, but instead, it's he dies with... It. No, I, I think that's a poor example. Because <laughs> he has a full mm. character arc throughout the entirety of Independence Day, and he does the ultimate sacrifice to win the day. Uh, I'm not Brian saying Cranston's character doesn't do that. But in terms of a character that everybody thinks is crazy, even though he turns out to be correct. If Brian Cranston lived to the end of Godzilla, I'm pretty sure he would have flown a ship into him. It kills me to agree with you, but yes, yes, Tim, that's <laughs> your point is correct. Just Brian Cranston doing the line. I'm back. <laughs> What's your choice? Side note, I choose to believe Randy Quaid actually... He was not abducted by aliens, and it was more like a sleep Sexual paralysis. Thing? Or that. No, oh. yeah. <laughs> it was a misconnections on Craigslist kind of thing. I still like to think of he goes up in the ship, and all of a sudden you see him just dock and then sit at the helm. 
<laughs> Welcome back, sir. <laughs> <laughs> what a turn. <laughs> Directed by M. Night Shabala. So, Dean, you can go, if you want, you can go last. Um, seeing as you're the, you're the main event. And give me time to cough out all the phlegm that I have in my I'm just show, the, the podcast fluffer um, to prepare. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> You need this. <laughs> there, you can sample that later. <laughs> um, so, my film that I decided to choose for this, uh, to nobody's surprise, probably, is Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Look, you don't understand. There is a maniac trying to kill us. Welcome to New York. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Up your shoes, son of a bitch. You're not talking me that way. Get out of here. <laughs> I hate when he dies at all the end of these movies. So, played by V.C. Dupree, is a character, Julius. And Julius, anybody who has seen the movie will remember oh, yeah. because it's he's the, best the one death. who decides. When he finds himself up on the rooftop in Manhattan with Jason there, I'm going to box this guy. And yeah, he decides just to just like bare fist to cuff. Fighting. Yeah. And he's just like laying haymakers and doing like body to head, body to head, like combos on Jason. And finally just gets so tuckered out. He's just like, fine, take your best shot. And Jason just decapitates him with one uppercut. Yeah. And I would have loved if that movie ended with him actually just doing like a 25 minute, just round after round. <laughs> Jason goes back to his corner. He goes back to his. I haven't seen usually in these. I noticed there's a trend that you usually pick like a Friday the 13th, the Halloween, like something like that. Now, I haven't seen all these sequels. Is it as ridiculous as I as I think it is when he actually goes up to try to box or is it more of like trying to be an honorable moment? Or is it supposed to be like, really, you're going to box the guy? I mean, it's he knows in, he's fucked, right? And yeah, like in like, the context of I'm the film, fight. I yeah, like he knows he's not going to take this guy down. But it's more like, OK, we've been running all night. I'm stuck up here. What else am I going to do? So it's just, OK, we're going to give it a shot. Let's see if we can fight him. <laughs> it's like the equivalent of in Lethal Weapon 4 when they're like, they get away. And it's how do you do with that thing with a gun? Go I don't know. Him. Let's go ask him. It sucks for him because he has to punch Jason's mask. He has to punch the yeah. hockey mask. So he's just punching no bare knuckle to the mask. against the hockey mask. I'm sure his nose is feeling it. Like, you know, <laughs> like Mando, when the dark trooper was beating this crap out of Mando with his helmet on, like, you know, he felt that. <laughs> I mean, the least he could have done is just taken his mask off for it. Like, he knows he's going to win anyway. Ooh, like Predator, when they go like head to head, he takes off the mask and it's like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> he takes it off and Julie's like, put it back on, put it back in. I wonder what it's like hitting him in the kidneys. Like, is this like soggy, like a big soggy piece of sod like he's punching? Like, what does Jason feel like to get in? Or what if he just like gets him one solid one right to the throat? He's just shrugging off. Jason's actually out. like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he's shrugging <laughs> off everything and all of a sudden he's just like... <laughs> I didn't expect you to actually do that. Julia sees it, so he starts to lean into it, and it just only punches to his throat. I like this because it reminded me of Mortal Kombat and Johnny Cage's fatality. Of like, oh yeah, decapitation. <laughs> when Julius drops into a, a split and punches him right in the groin. <laughs> just That just inst insta-kills Jason right in the nuts. <laughs> His head sh and spine shoots right out of his body like a rock'em sock'em robot. <laughs> they just hit his eject button. I like the first person view of the camera of his head flying. It's like kind of goes with the science of like, oh, the head's alive for a little bit after it's decapitated. Just see the camera spinning after his head gets punched off. That's always been so morbid to me to think like one guy tried to actually like, hey, I'm going to get decapitated for my sacrilegious views on science and I'm going to test to see if I'm alive still, I'm going to keep blinking and then like, he, he tried to do that Oh, <laughs> it's a new YouTube trend <laughs> decapitation, try to blink challenge parentheses, impossible 
<laughs> I don't know how the algorithm works, but I'm now on decapitation TikTok. <laughs> Please don't do a decapitation of Wes Anderson style. <laughs> uh, I came up with three. Um, I'm watching. Sorry, Dean. I don't mean to interrupt, but Tim posted the the fight for that, and the way that it's set on the rooftop. I can only imagine, like, if you look in the background, you could see like the turtles fighting Shredder, because <laughs> it's lit in the same exact way, and it's shot almost the same way. I mean, what if all of a sudden, as he's fighting Jason? Casey Jones shows up on a rooftop. What are you, some kind of punker? Where he get his masks from? Julius's head goes into the back of a garbage truck and he's just like, oops. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to see, uh, what if Shredder and the Turtles team up to fight Jason? Like, how would that work? Yeah, I'm going to start, I'm going to commission a comic just based on this <laughs> it's well, can, exactly we, can we get a moment. GoFundMe or Kickstarter going? <laughs> For our own personal amusement. <laughs> oh, when is this going to be in production? It's not. I just want one copy sent to me. <laughs> you destroy finish it, it and you throw it in the fire. Yeah, destroy it afterwards. <laughs> and here it ends. <laughs> I'm satisfied. In Friday the 13th, uh, canon, he dies in part four. So he goes from being like a backwoods, superpowered maniac to... Then dying, and then in part six, he gets resurrected by a bolt of lightning, and then he's undead. So he has different characteristics. I mean, Jason X showed us what? That you can kill him as long as... You You pile drive him from space? Yeah. Well, at first, it's like, you can kill him. It's just like, don't put him on a table full of nanotechnology. So did they explain how he gets cryogenically frozen yet? Oh, at the beginning of Jason X? Yeah, so there's a like a five-minute scene at the beginning of Jason X oh, it's with there. David okay. Cronenberg. It would, have been, it would have been better if they just not ever even said it. It's just he happens to be frozen. Yeah. I think it would have been a wiser choice because then they can open it up for a future movie where it's like a prequel, and then it's like you're fighting, you're fighting, and then it, in, like as all horror movies do, the girl's running, the girl's running, she goes into this building, find out it's like some cryogenic facility. And then that's where he gets frozen and like kept there. So that's actually pretty much the first five minutes of the film is the entirety of that film right there. Um, Is David Cronenberg is part of some like group that's researching him. And then he breaks loose and goes on a rampage and he chases the girl and she ends up getting him into the cryo chamber and locking him in. And then he stabs through it and stabs her. And then both of them end up getting kind of cryogenically frozen and then way in the future, they both get awakened. And then she is one of the people fighting Jason in the future. So. Huh. And what is your choice for the evening? Who, me? Me, Dean Fisher? On my great return to this podcast. I was torn between just, three. What? Are you just hyping up your name so that when people look up the credits for that movie you shot know who to look for yeah i shot a movie everybody and we're gonna review it once it comes out i want to can we do that yeah and we'll tear it apart it was full screen yeah i hate how it was shot <laughs> cinematographer clearly didn't know what they were doing <laughs> yeah boys out there i made a movie hopefully it's not the last one but we'll see um <laughs> for you or just in general <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'll never find out what happens in Fast 11. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Dean turned the lights off on this on the way out. <laughs> Shit, we killed him. <laughs> I'm dying. My pick was between three. Two of the characters have the same first name. I still don't know if I've picked yet. Um, <laughs> I, I like how you include the listeners in being able to go through this process in real time. <laughs> I guess I'll just go with the first one that came to mind. Um, I saw this movie, I think when I must have been a teenager of some age, which includes 13 to year 19, depending on when this movie came out. Um, But it's Stephen King's greatest blunder in all of his writing decisions. And that is the death of John Coffey in the movie The Green Mile. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby! Don't you put that on us! You are not paralyzed! Hey, man. Oh. You can walk! Oh. You can walk! I can walk! You can walk! <laughs> you are back! I love you guys! 
Now, when you said greatest blunder, I was thinking maximum overdrive. He's going to go to maximum overdrive. <laughs> I thought he was thinking of Dreamcatcher. <laughs> oh, I never saw Dreamcatcher. I heard it wasn't great. I liked it. Um, but the Green Mile made me cry Actually, I so hard. Oh, Quick minor digression. I didn't know movies can be bad until I saw The Village. <laughs> I am Night Shyamalan. Until then, every movie I saw up to that point, I was like, that wasn't bad. Maybe not the greatest I've seen, but I'm like, eh, it was pretty good. And that includes Dreamcatcher and a lot of other ilk of the same caliber and quality. But Village was like, what the fuck? And then worst part, my friend Doug leans over literally as we sat down in the theater, lights go down, he leans over to me and he's like, I heard this was bad. <laughs> and I just looked at him with like daggers, like seriously, dude. And then watching it was one of the worst that I'd seen. And I was pretty mad after the end of it. But sorry. That was my story. Was it just the, do you think that put that changed something for you? I don't know. I thought about that too. Or made you look at it critically. Maybe I think it was because I knew people thought it was bad. And then watching it, it turned, it made me hypercritical as to what I was watching. And ever since, anything with M. Night Shyamalan, I'm always apprehensive about watching. I did enjoy Old, and that's the last thing I saw of his before that. I can't really remember. So you were 18 or 19, and you were like, every movie can be entertaining until yeah. The Village. <laughs> yeah. Got, got you. BV and AV. Yeah, John Coffey. Have you guys seen The Green Mile? I have not. Uh, not in 15 years. Uh, you're, I guess, yeah. It's 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 an old movie, so if you haven't, it's whatever. Spoiled. It's one of those... One of, it's, it is one of those movies I do want to see, and it made me laugh, because HBO, I was looking through their list of, like, 90s nostalgia, and it's like, you know, Rush Hour, and um, Speed, and wedged in between all of these super popular comedy action hits was Schindler's List. And it just kind of did a double take and as much as a movie like that is on my bucket list to watch it's just really hard to kind of squeeze that in like i'm gonna watch schindler's list today i'm gonna watch the green mile knowing that it's a pretty fucked up serious movie <laughs> it's really good though um it's worth it was, watch. you said it was you said it was panned or just like the book no it's not panned they made it no it's not i'm just saying oh. that because he died because this character dies i'm like well ah uh, uh -uh. it's like it's more of like it's a shame that he does. It's just a shame. I can understand for the story why it happens, but it's like you think of what that character could have done if he wasn't killed. I think Michael Clark Duncan as John Coffey is one of the great characters in cinema, just in general. I think he did a like an amazing job as far as that, but also just... It's even more heartbreaking not having Michael Clark Duncan around anymore yeah. in general. That's that's for sure. I always liked him in movies. Yeah. Yeah, he was always... I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I've seen everything he's been in, but I never disliked him in anything that I've seen. Even not seeing this movie in years, just thinking about or hearing just the start of his like mini speech towards the, the I'm tired boss thing is heartbreaking. Yeah. So you're saying he should have lived. He, sh he should have. He should have been like, I'm tired boss. Mostly I'm tired of people being ugly to each other. Anyway, he, deuces. He rips off the restraints <laughs> and he just Michael Myers his way through, through the, the water uh, fountain through the window. So he chiefs his way out of there. <laughs> Picks up the water, the drinking fountain. Come on, gang. Wall. And it's like him, Chief, all of these other inmates that just like <laughs> the Avengers of crime. <laughs> Everybody in the great escape. happily ever after. <laughs> but like, it's like him, it's Chief, it's like the Birdman of Alcatraz, and all of a sudden it's like Hannibal Lecter. And you're like, one of us is not <laughs> like the minute. rest of us. <laughs> Me as well. <laughs> so yes i i think that's a a very good choice overall 
Poor Joan Coffey. Do you think you would ever pick the Green Mile as a screen refresh episode, Dean? No. No? I, I mean, like, I'm not, I don't know why I'm laughing, but, like, it doesn't seem like the kind of movie I would I would choose for it. Like, I, I know we watched all of those. I've Philadelphia a, is my next choice. <laughs> Jeez. I, I know we watch all of those out of, like, a, a place of enjoyment and love, but also we'll point out things that are just ridiculous. The Green Mile, I just feel like, what do you dunk on in the Green Mile? <laughs> yeah, really, and not feel like a monster. Everything's so good. I love. I mean, even though he's a plays a piece of shit, Sam Rockwell's so good in that too. Um, I mean, I feel like that's a lot of Sam Rockwell roles. <laughs> <laughs> he's so good. If there was, he's like would be the top of my list. If it's like, is there an actor you would want to cast or work with? I'd be like Sam Rockwell for sure. He hasn't been. He has no problems, does he? Can I say that and not be weird? <laughs> He's not problematic, is he? Yeah, you're not gonna like Google him and just be like, "Ooh, damn it!" He's not the Rock, so you're you're good. You're just gonna like all of a sudden just check the news, and it's gonna be like, after the twelve murders were found. <laughs> God damn it! Not again. On peddling smoke cigarettes to kids into his late twenties. <laughs> I'm going to make that custom action figure from the, his small role in the Ninja Turtles. Just remember, menthol is green and regular is red. I'm just going to look at those reference picks and whatever the boxes are. Um, Yeah, John Coffey. Do we have any honorable mentions? I do, because I told you I had three choices. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, okay, if you want to alley-oop yourself, go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of an, uh, I mean, I, one. I have two that came to mind immediately the one i mentioned which was julius and i did have a second one which nick might agree idris elba and his crew in prometheus all the the pilots and engineers <laughs> you're gonna the say the, the wire oh, yeah. <laughs> i don't know if i agree with that only because i thought the movie in itself was mm. i mean I to me, they were deserved the, they were the likable they part better yeah yeah they, they they deserved a better movie they shouldn't have been in that one I still it was just down like they, they just no. decide instead they take off into the sky, leave everybody else behind, and then they get a spinoff adventure that has no aliens in it. A thousand percent, I'd pay to watch that instead. Yeah, I get very easily swayed by like public opinion, at least on movies. Um, Real talk, do Prometheus you? wasn't bad. It was a bad alien. I movie. do, I do on like whether I will sit down to watch it or not. Like I might feel different if I watched it. I'm not saying because people hate it, I hate it, but because a bunch of people were disappointed by that one, I'm like, eh, I'll see a different movie instead. You're the and only I person I know that did, that did not like Mario. You're the only person. You know, my wife, she didn't like it. She fell asleep. I stand by my laurels. Eh. My stand laurels. Um, what's your second pick? <laughs> oh, Tim, you have not, wait, Tim's or mine? Yours, you didn't say it. It was another John. It was a tragic death. John Locke. Constantine? John Locke uh, from the show Lost. Spoilers I thought his from Lost. death was bullshit. I'm one of the, see, I'm in the minority, I think, on that show where I liked everything. I liked the ending. I liked it all. Everybody was pissed by that show, but I didn't get swayed well, by it's, anybody there. The long term investment that led to nothing, <laughs> it led to everything. Um, <laughs> mystery box yeah John Locke dies in that show very unceremoniously very tragically yeah after being such an important character it's just like yeah just it was weird that they death. have him get off the island and then he trips in the bathtub one year later <laughs> no it was like a scene from uh, Final Destination like he slips, but then it's like a Rube Goldberg of like uh, things happening. <laughs> <laughs> he slips and then it pans out and his house explodes. <laughs> no explanation for how that Rube Goldberg. But then he flies happens. through the air. He's still alive from. The <laughs> 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 then he's impaled. Um, Hits by a plane. <laughs> survives, but he's still on the plane. Yeah, that was my other choice. Now, why do you feel that he he shouldn't have died? You just like the character too much? Well, I didn't like the character. It's 
I think he... Wasn't he a villain? No. I mean, yes and no. There was like some heel turns, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah. He genuinely wanted what was best for everybody slash the island, I think. Huh. Um, he was trying... I mean, he was like... He, you know, he's in a wheelchair and then he could miraculously walk when they crashed on the island. He just had like a... I don't know, he just had the shit end of the stick by the end of his story. We'll allow it. The end. Nick, did you have my one? movies? Nick? To see if... The, the only one that came up... Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It just sounds... Sometimes I wonder. Um, <laughs> the only one that came to mind, I'm looking through my list of stuff, is um, Deep Blue Sea with um, Samuel L. Jackson. I really felt like he should have oh, lived. Oh, and his death was such like a shock value kind of thing that it, it felt like it was just really weird of him of all people were to get a death like that. But yeah, that's my uh, I mean, second choice. It was pretty funny though. Questions. Yeah, it was you weren't expecting it? That's for sure. I mean, the one that really surprised me in that movie though was um, was it Saffron Burrows? Was the mm -hmm. yeah like that was the surprise because I guess they decided. Well, she wasn't involved in making all these sharks, so she shouldn't really get away scot-free. So they're like, LL Cool J, you live. Saffron Burrows, you die at the very end, surprisingly. Oh, spoilers for Deep Blue Sea for everybody who cares. You're only <laughs> watching gets, it for Thomas She Jane doesn't even anyway. get like mauled. She just straight up gets swallowed, right? She's just swallowed whole. Mm -hmm. No, I think they got her, like two of them, like T-Rex... Lost World. Really? Story. I think she just gets oh, I, swallowed. I don't. It's been a while. Should, that should remember. be a screen refresh for summer. My other choice, I think, is probably. Um, damn, I had it and I lost it. Um, I think maybe Tron Legacy with Jeff Bridges dying. He should have. He should have stayed around. I get it. He's old, passing the torch to the next generation. But I thought his death was kind of stupid. Surprise! So, at some point, I want to do some sort of like. I don't care what show it's on. If I can break Mike down and do it on Don't Open, or if I do it here, shark movies for summertime. Just shark mm. movies. Yeah. Who doesn't love a good shark movie in like July? 47 meters down and 47 meters down again. Oh. I forgot what the sequel was called. Uncaged. Down again. Was it called Down Again? <laughs> uh, no, I think it was 47 meters down, Uncaged. 48 uh, meters Surprisingly down. fun. The, the first one was like a very claustrophobic um, shark movie that you expect something a little more dumb, but it turns out to be pretty good. And then the sequel What's is the just kind of Blake wacky Lively. shark. The Shallows. The Shallows. Shallows is good. I like Shallows. The Shallows has the theme song by Lady Gaga, right? Yeah. And then they reused it for yeah they reused it for a Star is Born. It was really for the shark, which I thought was so weird because watching a Star is Born, I'm like, why are they using the theme song from that Blake Lively movie <laughs> that she sings to the shark at the end? <laughs> and you have a CGI shark, but the mouth is like that's the, what's yeah, that's what stays the shark from eating her is that song. Like he's the yeah. shark is overcome, and then she gets like real close, and then just like. Stabs it in the brain. No, the shark signs her to its record label, Deep Blue Sea Records. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a Deeper, star with lower the my hat as a shark fan or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, this has gone off the rails, but I love it. Why well, so, listen to our stuff when I'm editing? If it makes me laugh, I don't, I don't care. It's stated. <laughs> it's it's not for you, listeners. It's for Dean's amusement. <laughs> We have great taste, so you should like what we do. That wraps up this episode on characters who should have lived. As always, you can reach us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email to screenrefresh at gmail.com and let us know what your top three would be, or suggest any topics you'd like to hear us discuss here. Also, we now have a Discord. Come on over and chat with us and get behind-the-scenes tidbits on your favorite episodes. That's it for us, so... For myself, for Tim, for Nick, this is Dean telling you to have a great week. You can catch us on Screen Refresh on the first Monday of the month. You can also listen to our sister podcast or brother podcast. Don't open this podcast, hosted by our own resident Screen Refresh person, Tim, and his co-host, Mike Falsigno, every second and fourth Monday of the month. 
Thanks for listening. See you next time.